Hello, welcome back. We are more than halfway through the Let Us Worship Part 2 course. Again, I'm Pastor Peter from Sweden. Thank you for joining me for the first section of Lesson 5. Think about this statement. Everyone worships the same God, they just use different names. It's a perplexing statement about the nature of God, spoken by people who misunderstand the main message of the Bible. How sad it is that we often hear similar statements like, we are all on the road to paradise, we just take different paths. These tragic statements may be made by those who have never read or studied God's word. Let's evaluate what scripture does say about the nature of God. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 continues, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. A confessional Lutheran worship service includes words that remind us that the God we meet there is the one true God. The worship leader says what are called the words of invocation. They are in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The members respond by saying, Amen. Amen is the Hebrew word for I agree. A Bible passage Similar to the words of invocation is in Matthew 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. These words are spoken at the Lutheran baptism. It is comforting to know how God views us, as written in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God declares every believer at worship a royal priest. God is delighted with us and calls us his very own possession. God has made us his adopted children, members of a royal priesthood. Yet, we are acutely aware that every day we sin against our Heavenly Father. For this reason, the worship service usually moves immediately to the worship leader inviting everyone to confess their sins before God. Let's learn more about why there is an emphasis on a confession of sins in our worship service from the words of Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. In the first part of confession, we as believers admit that we are sinners 
who deserve God's punishment. We confess our sins because our loving God in his word urges us to do this. We confess our sins because we know and believe there is forgiveness of sins. God wants us to confess our complete sinfulness, that we are both sinful by nature and that we have sinned against him in thought, word, and action. God wants us to confess that our sins have separated us from him and that we deserve only eternal death. After the confession, we often sing a short song called the Kyrie. The Greek phrase Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. The original song, which traces its origin back to the early Christian church, has just three lines. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. And Lord, have mercy on us. These words from the book of Luke reflect on the anguish of the sinful tax collector in the temple. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. In this song, as we agonize over our own horrible sins, we humbly throw ourselves upon God's mercy, asking for forgiveness. The second part of confession, usually called the absolution, is hearing comforting words from the pastor or worship leader as he announces God's forgiveness to the worshipers. The worship leader relates the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the basis for forgiveness. There is meaning behind the words spoken and the actions taken in a confessional Lutheran worship service, and all are based on the true God and the true Word of God. Confession means contemplating our words and actions deep in our hearts and souls, and recognizing the sins we have committed in our thoughts, words, actions, and omissions. The worship leader's immediate announcement of sins forgiven gives us peace and joy. As Psalm 32 verse 5 says, And you forgave the guilt of my sin, a message we are eager to hear at every worship service. In live class, your tell instructor will read an example of a confession of sins and the words of absolution for further discussion. Please continue and join me again for lesson six. In the next lesson, we'll continue studying the order of a worship service. Following the announcement of absolution, the forgiveness of sins, we sing words once sung by God's mighty angels. I'm Pastor Peter. I look forward to guiding your continued study. May God bless you.